You guys ready to go? Now, when God makes us, he takes a look, the Father takes a look at the Son, and out of an overflow of love that the Father has for the Son, he decides to populate this world with people who are made in the image of the Son. Are you seeing this? He loves the Son so much that he makes the world in the image of his Son. He makes all of us in the image of his Son. He makes a bunch of us, replicas of the Son. And we're not God, but we are in his image. About Jesus, moving to verse 3, he was in the beginning with God. He repeats himself and he says that what? Jesus created all things and without him nothing came into being that came into being. Jesus is described in ways that cannot be misinterpreted. You must just destroy the text. Jesus created all things, and without him, nothing came into being that came into being. Are you seeing this? When God makes us, he takes a look, the Father takes a look at the Son, and out of an overflow of love that the Father has for the Son, he decides to populate this world with people who are made in the image of the Son. Jesus is the eternal God. He's always existed alongside the Father, with the Father. He is God. He created everything in existence, and in So when I came to the very interesting Moody Bible Institute doctrinal statement, I was surprised and somewhat shocked to find them saying, God is a person who has revealed himself as a trinity in unity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, and yet one God. I'll read that again. God is a person, three persons, and yet one God. This does not propose anything to our minds that makes any sense at all. It's entirely incoherent. One person cannot be three persons. But you know, the Athanasian Creed that was recited week by week in church for centuries simply says that the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, the Holy Spirit is Almighty, but this is not three Almighties, which leaves the human brain in a fog. It's no better than saying this is a chair, that's also a chair, and that's another chair, but it's really one chair. We are not talking coherent language. And I'm reminded of the famous statement of a Dr. Hay, who lectured at Cambridge on the Trinity, and he said, we must be always industrious to say that our Trinity is completely incoherent and completely unintelligible. It makes no sense at a basic language level. And therefore it leaves the brain in a fog and communicates nothing. Is that the the concept of the Trinity only came up after Christians already accepted the deity of Jesus. It was an effort, a philosophical effort, to justify something they believed already, an absurdity they believed already. To believe a man is God, they had to come up with an idea of the Trinity. It wasn't that they first came up with an idea of the Trinity and that they said, oh, Jesus is the one that fits into the Trinity. Before Jesus came to the world, no one thought of the Trinity. So the Trinity is a, a, an excuse for idolatry.